I want to welcome you to a very unusual Sunday. Um, behind me, I'm looking out at nothing, no one. Uh, the church is empty, and I appreciate you taking seriously our uh, need to cancel due to the illness that is spreading across our country. I understand that this is an uneasy time, and it makes people upset to think about not being able to do the things that we want to do. Trust me, I'm a creature of habit, and I really want you all here. Look at, I'm even looking to where you are, and you're not there. It makes me very uncomfortable. So, if I make a lot of mistakes today, please bear with me. I have a few things that we need to talk about, a few housekeeping things that we need to talk about. Uh, number one, Dish It Up Cafe is canceled this week. Um, for safety concerns, we have decided not to have it. Uh, mission meeting is still on at this point, but that may change as the week goes on. Uh, please just keep an ear out or keep checking your emails for that. And some of you have asked me about giving. And I want to say to you that uh, giving, you can make up when we're back. But also, giving is something that, there's this thing that we have, it's called the U.S. Mail. And uh, you can go ahead and send it through the mail to the church, 105 East Main Street, Elida, Ohio. Uh, and you can just send your giving in that way, or you can just hold on to it and put it back in the plates. Right now, we are officially postponing church until the end of March. We are going to play it by ear. And uh, my hope is that we can get back on schedule as quickly as possible. We are going to continue our sermon series. We are going to keep going with the sermon series on prayer. And this week, it's on answers to prayer, which is really quite fitting for this week. I have a couple of scriptures for you. One from James, uh, chapter 4, verses 1 to 3. And one from Mark, just one verse from chapter 14. Here's the James uh, 4, 1 through 3. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do not have it, so you commit murder. And you covet something and cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. And from Mark, the 14th chapter, verse 36. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. So, we all have things that we pray for. We pray for sometimes simple, silly things. Uh, I remember as a child praying for good candy at Easter, or as a student in, uh, uh, in high school or in college praying for good grades. So there are a lot of things that we spend our time praying about, but the reality is, are we really praying about what God wants us to do? So. A lot of us spend time praying for things that we really don't need. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen the, the show Bruce Almighty, but there's a point at which Bruce, the character on the show, be, takes over for answering prayers for, for God, and he just answers every prayer, yes. And uh, what ensues is hilarious. Everybody gets everything they want, and uh, the lottery is worth like 25 cents or $1.25 for everybody who wins it because everybody prays to win it, and he answers all of those prayers, yes. If everybody got everything that they prayed for, it would be a crazy, messed up world. I want to say to you that the scripture from Mark tells us exactly what it is that we're, we should be thinking about. We spend a lot of time wanting what other people have. Oh, if only I had a 
better house or a faster car or uh, if I was prettier or if I was skinnier, if I was stronger, if I was faster. We want all of these things and we spend a lot of time and a lot of energy and a lot of effort trying to get the things that we want. And over the last couple weeks especially, people have been praying for things, well, that are probably not going to happen. We want this disease to completely miss us. And if it does come our way, we don't want to get it. It's one of those things in life. People aren't going to be able to choose who gets it and who doesn't get it. Yes, you can be more safe. Wash your hands, suds. Make sure you uh, keep your personal distance. We've all heard these things on the news. If you want to know them, all you have to do is go to the CDC and look it up. But the reality is that it's going to creep into our community, slowly but surely. At the beginning of the week, there were two or three cases in Ohio, and now it's up over 20. And that number will continue to grow, and there's not a whole lot that we can do to stop it. I know some people are panicking. If you've tried to buy toilet paper at the store, you realize just how funny that is, or how serious, because people are truly afraid of what's coming. So the reality is, what is it that we can do as a community of faith to help those who are struggling at this difficult time? And that's where I believe our prayers should be focused. You see, if we're truly working and understanding what God would have us do, then the reality is that we should be looking not at what we need, but at what others need. Because when we look at the life and times of Jesus Christ, we see that he reached out to those in need. Even those in need who no one else in society wanted anything to do with. He cleansed the lepers who were forced to go ahead to, to yell ahead of themselves that there was a person coming with leprosy in the time of Jesus. No one would touch them, talk to them, befriend them. But yet he was unafraid. He was able to help those in need and to make them feel comfortable with who they were. During this difficult time, there are going to be people who are out of work for one reason or another, and money is going to be tight. And so there's going to be an increased need in those places where people go to get help. Food banks are going to need extra food. Places that help with social situations are going to need extra workers and extra finances to make people comfortable and to keep people where they're at. Now, some of you may say, isn't that the job of our government to do that? But the reality is, the church has been doing it far longer than the government has been doing it, and we need to be continuing what it is that we're already doing. Your actions might be the answer to someone's prayer. What you give, and what you help with, and what you do. Now, if you're a person who is at risk, and I stand before you as clearly fitting into people at risk, they say people over the age of, of 50, people with health concerns, especially people with respiratory concerns, you need to be extra careful with yourself and take care of yourself. But that doesn't mean that you can't help through giving of monetary funds, or when you're out buying extra food and helping food pantries with that. The church will continue to be open Monday through Thursday, 9 to 2. I'm also here. 
And if you need somebody to talk to, if the fear is overwhelming, I want to encourage you to call the church and I can spend some time talking with you. Because God tells us to not be afraid. But in situations like this, it's difficult for us to not be afraid. Because fear is a part of our lives. And the news tells us that we need to be worried. Misinformation travels around. But I want to say to you that in the midst of all of this, that God is out there answering our prayers. And God is with us. God will not leave us. God will not forsake us. And the promise holds true for us that as Christians, we can count on God to be present with us. So, answered prayers. So I'm praying for a friend who has cancer. Why doesn't God answer that prayer? I'm praying for a friend who's lost their job. Why doesn't God answer that prayer? I want to say to you that in the garden, on the night he was betrayed, Christ desired for what he knew was to come to pass over him so that he would not have to fulfill the destiny of hanging on the cross. He was fully human in that moment, and like us, he faced his fear. His human side wanted this to pass. Take this cup from me, Lord, was his quote. But he finishes it with what we all should finish, which is, not my will, but your will be done. The reality is that when we go at things with the right motive, and when we rely on God to lead us through, that we can get through anything. And yes, continue to pray. I asked you last week to be about praying in some specific ways. And this week, I want you to be praying for some specific people. In your life, you know people who have been affected by this disease. If you don't know now, you will know soon those people. And I want you to be praying for them. And I want you to be praying for those people who you don't know who are affected by this disease. That they can get through this without fear. The great majority of people who contract the coronavirus are going to be just fine. They're going to be sick, they're going to get well, and we're going to go on with life. There are going to be those among us who get ill, and yes, they're going to perish. But I would say to you that we face those same sort of concerns in all areas of our lives. Can you imagine what our world would be like if every case of cancer that was diagnosed every day was put on a map? It would overwhelm us. And if, along with that, next to it, the number of people who died from cancer that day was posted, it would again be overwhelming. How about traffic accidents? If every traffic incident was posted on a map every day and updated, the map would be full and we would be overwhelmed. The same is true for traffic deaths, even something so simple as the flu. If every case of flu was placed on a map across this country, we would be amazed at the number of cases of flu. The reality is we face death every day as a society. And this facing death is not that much different than all of those cases that have come before. 
The reality is, is that we have to continue to move forward. We have to continue to love one another. We have to continue to care for one another. <laughs> Just like this. The last thing I want to do is preach to an empty church. It's so difficult right now, I have no idea where to look. I keep looking at the camera, and my camera person says, keep looking up. It looks better when you look up. But when I look up, I look at no one. I don't like these going out on Facebook at all. But now, because we were doing this just a few weeks before, this sermon is available to you. Now, <laughs> the big question is, how do we get a hold of you to let you know where it's at? We're working on it, I promise. And once you find out where it's at, how do we make sure that you're able to watch it? We have to remember to mark you off as a member so that you can see the video. And we're working on that as well. And this isn't posted live to the church website. It's posted live to my wife's Facebook page and then is reposted to the church Facebook page. We continue to work out the bugs and we will continue to work out the bugs. And all of those are answered prayers. Maybe this sermon today is an answered prayer for you. And even if it's not March 15th, when you're listening to this, maybe it's an answered prayer for you whatever day you're listening to it. And for that, I give thanks to God. So, as you're praying your prayers, and I want to say to you that I think next week we're going to go over some of the statistics that we got from our little survey. If you haven't taken the survey, again, go to our Facebook page or to the email that you probably already deleted because it looked like junk mail and click on the link and take the survey. Three simple questions. It takes the average person about a minute to do it. It was a minute and three seconds last week. It's a minute and four seconds this week. Most of you are answering all the questions. Be brave. Answer all the questions. We'll go over some of those results next week. It's hard to preach a long sermon when there's not people who are paying attention. Or, well, people nodding off as well. It's hard to tell jokes because nobody laughs. It's, uh, it's hard to interact when I can't see the audience. But the reality is that this message doesn't have anything to do with me. It really doesn't even have anything to do with you. It's more about God reaching people. If this sermon speaks to you, then I want to say to you that it's God speaking to you through what it is that I've babbled on about here today. We spend time in Scripture, in Mark, and in James, and we know what we should pray for. And we know that we shouldn't covet what other people have. And we know that we should end each and every prayer with, not my will, but your will, Father, so that God will continue to help us to grow in our faith. So continue to be about prayer. Carve out some time. Carve out a space. <laughs> For those of you who are stuck with children, good luck carving out time and space. <laughs> Maybe during snack time you could, uh, you could spend a little time in prayer. Maybe when you're in the bathroom, not using the bathroom, but just for the quiet time by yourself. Maybe when you're driving back and forth to work. Pray for those who don't have a job this week. Maybe pray for those who are watching their children at home. 
Pray for those who don't have anybody to watch their children, but still have to go to work. Be in prayer. And don't be afraid to ask for what it is that you want. Because in doing that, we continue to grow in faith. And answers to prayers might not always come the way we want them to. For a long time as a teenager, I prayed for a yellow Corvette. I never got one. I didn't understand why. Now I understand why. I would have had a hundred tickets and probably crashed the car. God kept me safe. But it wasn't clear until years later. And that's the way prayer is sometimes with us now. We don't understand why, but it becomes clear later on when we help somebody else with the same situation, when we guide somebody through a difficult spot because we've had that experience ourselves. Answered prayer looks like a lot of things. And I want to encourage you this week to continue to cling to God, to not fear what is to come, but to face unafraid the trials that come. And to remember that in all things, to ask for God's will to be done. And to love each other. That is my prayer for you this week. Will you pray with me? God of grace and mercy, we give thanks for your presence here with us. And Lord, be with those that are afraid. Give them peace. Be with those that are hungry and feed them. Be with those who are worried and help them to overcome their fear through your love. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Thanks.